So it's now my turn to talk about heart ung interaction in assisted breathing. We're missing an L there. But anyway, but anyway you know, it's difficult to talk about heart lung interaction after Professor Pinsky's lecture. But let's see what we can tell, say about assisted breathing as opposed to controlled breathing. These are my conflict of interest. In assisted breathing, we should take into account a very important concept. I stole this slide from my friend Giacomo Bellani. Because normally, we think about airway pressure. But during assisted breathing, the patient breathes on its own, it makes inspiratory effort, so there is a negative pressure generated in the chest by the patient, and that has to be taken into account, even if we do not see it. So, as, as we have just heard, heart-lung interaction depends on pressure, uh, and make, so positive pressure has effect upon right ventricle and left ventricle, Changes in lung volume, broadly speaking, increase right ventricular afterload. Transpulmonary pressure, therefore, affects right ventricular afterload. If we increase volume, it means transpulmonary pressure is increased. And this you have seen already, that pulmonary vascular resistance if we admit the resistance in, in, exists in the pulmonary vascular, vasculature, it increases when we increase volume from a certain point on. Moreover, we should never forget a very important fact, that beside pressure and volume, hemodynamic, pulmonary hemodynamics changes according in status, in, status, in statuses of hypoxia or hypercapnia, because hypoxia and hypercapnia are potent vasoconstrictors of the lung. So we have heard that increased pleural pressure decreases venous return. This is a fact. The mechanism sometimes is debated, but the fact is that if we increase intrathoracic pressure, the venous return decreases. The, the, a decrease in pleural pressure should increase venous return up to a certain point. Because if you suck through a collapsible, collapsible tube, the tube might collapse if you suck too hard. A couple of simple, very simple concepts. High pleural pressure causes core pulmonale, acute core pulmonale, in, it, in its extremes. Low pleural pressure causes acute pulmonary edema. So high pleural pressure is bad for the right heart. Low pleural pressure is bad for the left heart. You have seen this drawing already, and I will skip it. That positive pressure might influence the left ventricular function is known since many, many years, before Second World War. Pilots flying in airplanes, fighting in fighters without cabin pressurization, needed oxygen. And oxygen with positive pressure prevented and cured pulmonary edema. So this paper was published 1938 and showed that CPAP 
was a cure for pulmonary edema. The mechanism has been explained by Professor Pinsky. This is something that was published 1988, yes, 1988, by Francois Lenner when Warren Zeppel was doing a sabbatical in Paris. It's a very, very interesting slide. This is control mechanical ventilation. You see pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. It was a golden time when you could use Swan Gans catheters and read pressures. And here you have esophageal pressure, control mechanical ventilation. The patient get on spontaneous breathing. After five minutes, you see the esophageal pressure making very negative pressures on the chest because the patient breathes on his own, but obviously is not healthy. He makes a huge negative pressure during inspiration. Plural pressure goes down, but guess what? Wedge pressure goes up. And after nine minutes, the patient is tired, is not able to make such profound depressions during inspiration, but, pul but pulmonary, the occlusion pressure goes even higher. What has happened? Acute left heart decompensation, acute left heart failure, due to the decrease in plural pressure. The afterload has increased a lot. So this patient suffered acute left ventricular dysfunction during unsuccessful weaning from mechanical ventilation. And the mechanism is that the muscles of the patient caused an increase in the afterload of the, of the left ventricle. You see here that the, the decrease in esophageal pressure the increase in pulmonary artery occlusion from 7.5 to 24 uh, millimeters of mercury, explaining the mechanism of that. Here, once again, negative inspiratory efforts, huge negative depressions during inspiration cause pulmonary edema. This is it, not in failing hearts, in normal hearts, but in patients with bronchoconstriction. By the way, these were pediatric patients in which Stalkup could demonstrate that the edema was caused once again by profound efforts during inspiration due to increased airway resistance. And this is in dogs showing that the lung edema, fluid accumulation in the lung, is proportional to the drop in plural pressure. There is a huge amount of data on that. That does not mean that spontaneous breathing should be avoided, that you should stop breathing. But spontaneous breathing and inspiratory efforts might decompensate the heart, either when the heart is already almost failing, or when bronchoconstriction, high resistance, or low compliance require very high negative pressures. You can, your patient can even reach alveolar hemorrhage, but this is a different mechanism, though. I've been telling you, what I've been telling you? I've been telling you that huge inspiratory effort decompensate acute, may decompensate acutely the left heart. I've shown you bronchoconstriction, increased airway resistances. Now I show you the effect of decreased compliance. 
This is an experimental work by Yoshida with mild acute lung injury. The lung in control mechanical ventilation do much worse than lung in spontaneous breathing. So spontaneous breathing is good with mild lung injury. But with severe lung injury, spontaneous breathing is much worse than control mechanical ventilation. Why? Once again, it's a matter of compromises. When compliance is too low, the inspiratory effort is too high. And you get, and you get pulmonary edema. If you try to win an ARDS patient too early from positive pressure, you get a white lung. If you have a patient with an early ARDS and you delay mechanical ventilation and positive pressure, you get a white lung. Negative intrathoracic pressure cause lung edema when the capillaries are normal. When the capillaries are leaky, your chances of getting pulmonary edema increases very much. If you suck around, capilla around tubes, pipes with holes, a lot of water comes out. Another small point. We have heard that the heart lies on the cardiac fossa. That is a big hole between the two lungs. We people that study the lung believe that the ch in the chest we have the lungs full stop. But in the chest we have the lungs and between the lungs, we have the heart. For the heart to move, we need compliant lungs. I recently learned that the volume of the heart does not ch change during the cardiac cycle, but the shape does change. And recently, our colleagues from Toronto have demonstrated that our model of the lung being like a fluid or a balloon is not always true. That the lung, when consolidated, might behave like a solid rather than a fluid. And I wonder what's the effect of the diaphragm motion of the distortion of this, of this semi-solid lung on the cardiac action. So the, the end of this talk is that we have been talking about pleural pressures, airway pressures, transpulmonary pressures, now I have to talk about something else, alveolar pressures. The alveolar pressure is also very important and is the main difference between control mechanical ventilation and assisted ventilation. In control mechanical ventilation, the alveolar pressure is always higher than PEEP. See here? But the smaller the support, the more negative the alveolar pressure becomes. And we know that the alveolar pressure is very close to the interstitial pressure of the lung. And if we make an, a negative alveolar pressure, the interstitial pressure must become negative, at least according to Stobe. And once again, if we make a negative pressure around capillaries, both sides of the capillaries, we will get interstitial edema and alveolar edema. And by that, I think I'm finished.
But keep this drawing in mind because it's simple and effective. Thank you very much.